Hey what is up guys, so recently I was surfing the subreddit thread and I stumbled across a pretty interesting question. We sometimes say that we plan to hold certain stocks forever, but do you think today's blue chips will still be good to hold decades from now? If you don't know what blue chip companies are, they are essentially the large and well established companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon and etc. So this reddit post piqued my interest because I believe a lot of us including myself look at the US big tech giants or the top S&P 500 companies as the holy grail of technological advancement or disruption. Well I mean there's nothing wrong with that, the historical return of the S&P 500 index does speak for itself. 56 per annum for the past 1 year, almost 17% per annum for the past 3 years, 16% per annum for the past 5 years and almost 14% per annum for the past 10 years. I know the numbers are some somewhat inflated due to the Fed printing almost 20% of the US dollars in 2020 alone. But let's be real, even without that, they still can achieve a good 8-10% to per annum for the past few decades. So theoretically speaking, we can just buy the top 10 S&P 500 companies and hold forever until we retire. Sounds very simple right? Well, it's not that simple and straightforward. Let me explain why. If you look back at the historical top 10 S&P 500 companies, in 1980 we have companies like IBM which is a IT company, AT&T which is a network company and Exxon which is a oil and gas company. 10 years later in year 1990, we still have IBM and Exxon but this time we have a new contender, General Electric in the third place. Jumping forward to year 2000, we have GE at the first place being the most valuable company. Notice at the bottom we have a few inter or technology companies like Microsoft and Intel in the top 10 right now. But then in year 2010, the roles have reversed. Now we have tech giants like Apple and Microsoft oh, wow. topping the list, while previous titans such as GE and IBM have fallen down the chart. Then fast forward to year 2020, the holy cow year of pandemic. 7 out of 10 companies in the top 10 of the index are either internet or tech companies. And if you take a look at General Electric, they have a market cap of 116 billion US dollars right now and in comparison to their position as the largest S&P 500 company in the year 2000, they have fallen almost 75% from their peak in 20 years time. Anyways, the reason why I show you all of those is to prove to you that anything can happen within 5, 10 or 20 years time. I believe you must have heard of past performance is no guarantee of future results and that couldn't be any more true. So why did all those big and well established companies fell out of the rank? I boil it down to three main factors. Number one is the lack of innovation and the perfect example we have is Nokia. If you don't know who Nokia is or what Nokia does, then you can go back to your TikTok app lah. Go, go back lah. Uh, go back. Just kidding, just kidding. Wow, you know, oh, shit, and damn dinosaur already. Eh. Anyways, back to the topic. Back then, Nokia was one of the world's largest phone manufacturer until Steve Jobs made this presentation in 2007. At that time, Nokia didn't took Apple seriously and even some of the articles in 2012 stated that Nokia is still the world's largest mobile phone manufacturer with Apple in hot pursuit. Well man, I'm not gonna lie, reading that just sends chill down my spine. Nokia or no one really seen Apple coming. And needless to say, it was the beginning of the end for Nokia. It was a full-on disruption towards the mobile phone industry and by the time Nokia realized it, they were too late to pivot because they were so far behind the smartphone technology. Most of the people in the US have went for iPhone with the touch control while Nokia was still designing phones with loads and loads of buttons and the rest was history. They went from hero to zero in a few years time and this is the perfect segue for me to lead to the second factor why blue chips are not invincible, their inability to pivot. Perhaps the company's management was too incompetent to adapt to changes quickly or they were just being plain stubborn. Case in point, ExxonMobil, one of the world's largest oil and gas company. I mean, so what if you were the largest S&P 500 company back in 2010? Look at the top 10 list right now, they are not even in the top 10. Over the past 5 years, ExxonMobil has been on a steady state of decline in terms of its market cap and this largely stems from the world's transition towards sustainable and renewable energy. Its competitors BP and Shell have invested in renewables like wind and solar or shifted to producing more natural gas which has a lower carbon footprint. Almost every other energy companies were pivoting towards the renewable energy to stay relevant but ExxonMobil? They remained stubborn, they insisted to stay their cost in the oil and gas business with very minimal investment made in the sustainable energy department. The result? 
No surprise, they reported a 2023 quarter loss of 600 million US dollars. And to add salt to their wound, they were removed from the Dow Jones Industrial Average after being in it for almost a century. Now let that sink in. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. You are too much raining. <laughs> The third factor why blue chip companies can fail is because of their incompetent CEO and this is pretty much the combination of the previous two factors. I believe all of us must have heard of used Microsoft products some way or another in our life before and we always associate Microsoft with the iconic Bill Gates. Not for the divorce though. When Bill Gates retired as the CEO back in year 2000, Steve Ballmer succeeded him and went on to be the CEO of Microsoft. What followed next was possibly the darkest decade in the history of the tech giant. Steve Ballmer was known to be an anti-Steve Jobs. Steve, let me ask you about uh, the iPhone and the Zune, if, if I may. Steve Jobs goes to Macworld and he, he pulls out this iPhone. What was your first reaction when you saw that? $500 fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world, and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. And he often came up with ideas that either flop or just didn't quite keep up with the major trends in technology. His most notorious failure was the Windows Vista. I had one back then when I was a kid and I can tell you it was total garbage. I even had to downgrade it to Windows XP to get my homework done. And if you own one before, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And apart from that, Microsoft missed social networking, underestimated the iPhone and iPad, and they went for more complicated designs when everyone was turning their head towards more minimalistic designs. Long story short, they flopped over and over again and ultimately Steve Ballmer had to resign in 2013. For his entire 13 year stint, Microsoft traded sideways and down about 30%. It was not until his successor, Satya Nadella, took over the role as CEO that Microsoft finally started to make its comeback. Satya Nadella revamped Microsoft's business model and targeted businesses instead of consumers and subsequently, he introduced the Microsoft Azure, a cloud platform that is so successful that it is currently used by 95% of the Fortune 500 companies. What happened next was pretty self-explanatory and this is the impact of a competent CEO. Competition is stiff nowadays. All it takes is 5 to 10 years of complacency and even the largest companies can fall off the rank and become irrelevant very quickly. So next time someone tells you to buy into blue chip companies and enjoy the steady growth growth, you gotta think really hard before you buy into the idea. But that said, there are still good blue chip companies. Look at Apple, they are the world's largest company and yet they are reporting 21% sales growth year over year even during a world pandemic that slowed down every nation's economy and logistics. They are constantly innovating and recently they took the world by surprise with their M1 chip which blew Intel out of the water. They were never complacent even though they literally dominate the tech and gadget industry and recently they even hinted that they are moving into the electric vehicle business. So when someone said that blue chip companies have limited growth, it's not entirely true also. Apple, it's got a, it's got a fantastic manager. Tim Cook was underappreciated for a while. He's, he's one of the best managers in the, in the world and I've seen a lot of managers. And he's got a product that people absolutely love. And, and uh, uh, there's an installed base of people and they get satisfaction rates of 99%. Anyways, I'm not telling you to buy into Apple. Just go and do your own research and I'm sure the result will speak for itself. I know, I know, it's easy for me to say and pinpoint those companies' mistakes due to survivorship bias or whatever that is. But really, you gotta look and think forward if you are investing for a better future. So to answer the previous question, can we just buy into blue chip companies and hold them forever? The answer is... It depends. Well, we never know everything depends, depends. Might as well don't say, right? No, but jokes aside, if you plan to invest into any blue chip companies, you can't just look at their blue chip status. You need to look at their company's management, their business model, and look in the past how they reacted when they were faced with adversity. And that should give you a very good clue whether they will thrive in the future. Just these three things sound simple, right? Go on and check for the stocks in your portfolio. Do they score well in these three departments? If they did, good for you. 
but if they don't, time to reevaluate because not all companies are worth holding forever just for the sake of long term. But I think the idea of buying and holding forever and not trying to make adjustments requires that you've gotten it right in the first place. That you can only you can only hold tight if you've bought right, if you will. Remember, there is no such thing as too big to fail in the stock market. All right, that is all for today's video. I hope you gained something out of it. And if you did, help me smack the like and subscribe button down below. It will mean the world to me. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay invested, and as usual, I will see you in the next one.